All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the chain rule, which is um, a rule used when taking derivatives, and it really opens the door for us in terms of taking, being able to take the derivative of essentially almost any function we want now, um, when you combine it with the product and quotient rule and so forth. So, um, this, what I'm going to show you here initially is kind of what I guess would be thought of as kind of like the definition or you know, the, what the chain rule is, and it's a little bit difficult to, I think, comprehend without seeing an example. So bear with me for a second here as I show what's going on here, and then we'll apply this to several examples, and hopefully you'll get the hang of this. Okay? So the chain rule works when you have an inner function that is uh, inside something besides um, just x. Okay? So for example, let me go ahead and put a, one that we're going to apply this to over here. So for instance, something like this, um, 2x plus 1 to the fourth power, let's just say. Okay, so up until this point, we've done stuff to the fourth power, but it's always just been x to the fourth power. Okay, so now this 2x plus 1 I consider as an inner function um, inside the to the fourth power, and it's not just x. So here's where you would apply the chain rule um, to this. So let me just kind of show how this works, which is going to be a little confusing here at first with this one, but um, the chain rule says what you do first is you, you work from the outside first, and you first work with your, your outer function and take the derivative of that. So in this case, g of x is the function inside of f of x. So the first thing we're going to do is work with the outer function, f, and take the derivative of f. So it's going to be f prime. That's the first thing we're doing. Then we keep the inner function the same, so g of x is going to remain the same. Okay. And the chain rule then says, after you do this, multiply times the derivative of your inner function at the end. Okay. So again, this is kind of the, the general chain rule thing right here. Okay, And that's what we're going to apply to um, several examples that we'll see right now. So, how it applies to this, Okay, in this case the outer function is the to the fourth power. So that's what we're going to start with when taking the derivative. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 4 down in front because the power, we're going to use the power rule right now. Okay, so we're kind of thinking, you know, like if you had x to the 4th, you bring the 4 down to the front, subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's the first thing we'll do. I'll bring the 4 down to the front, okay, and this inner function, that's going to remain the same. And I will subtract 1 from my exponent, okay, to make it 3. And now at the end, this 2x plus 1 is the inner function, like the g of x right here. I have to multiply by the derivative, oops, not by g prime. I have to multiply by the derivative of this inner function, which in this case the derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2. Okay? So that is my derivative using the chain rule. And of course, you know, I could simplify the 4 times 2 to be 8. 2x plus 1 cubed. Okay? So, you know, before. Um, we had the chain rule, we could have found the derivative of this, but in order to do so, we would have had to expand it out. So multiply 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. And that would have been a big pain, especially when you have the fourth power. Um, you know, and think if you add it to the tenth power, twentieth power, how much of a pain that would be. So, you know, you could have done this. You could have expanded that out, taken the derivative, and you know, if you were to able to then factor that, it would have, you know, we would have seen that it would have been the same thing as this. Okay, you've got the same result, but this is a lot quicker. All right, so so there's one example where the chain rule comes in very handy. Um, <clears throat> another example would be with like a trig function, for instance. Say we had f of x is equal to um, sine of 10x. Okay, so so far. We have only been dealing with um, trig functions sine of x, cosine of x. So the inner function inside of the trig function has always just been x. So in this case, 10x okay, is now our inner function. So again, like we did over here, we're going to work from the outside first. So sine is like our outer function. In this case, it would be like our f okay, function when we think of it, referring to this example. And the g of x is our inner function. So the first thing we're going to do is the derivative of sine. So f prime uh, is going to be equal to, okay, the derivative of sine is cosine, okay? My inner function remains the same, keep that the same, and then at the end I have to multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. Okay. So there you go, that's uh, the chain rule applied to that right there. Now I can set, you know, if I wanted to, I could bring that 10 in front. 
Yeah, that'd probably be the likely way you would see it, if, say it was a multiple choice. But yeah, so that's applying the chain rule to a couple of basic examples. All right, let's take a peek at another example here using the chain rule. So here we have cosine cubed of x. Okay. Now, when applying the chain rule here, I think it's a lot easier to rewrite this before we actually apply the chain rule and rewrite it as cosine of x all in parentheses cubed. And it's the same thing, means the same thing, but it just looks a little different and I think it's easier to apply the chain rule to it. Okay? So now I think in this case we can see the cubed part is the outer function, cosine of x is the inner function, so we work with the outer first. So when we take the derivative, okay, I'm going to bring the 3 down and it will be 3 times, keep my inner function the same, cosine of x, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 1 from the exponent to get 2, and then I'll multiply times the derivative of cosine, and the derivative of cosine is just negative sine x. So, there's my derivative. Now if I want to just kind of make it a little bit neater, I could write it, the negative in front, negative 3, write it back as cosine squared x times sine x. Either way, it doesn't matter. I mean, both are equivalent to each other, but that's how the chain rule is applied in that case. Now, I could have had an inner function inside of the x. Let me, I'll change it up a little bit. Let's say we have something like um, y equals tangent um, to the fourth of, say, 8x. Okay, let's try that out. So in this case, again, I would recommend, before you even start trying to take a derivative, just rewriting it as tangent 8x to the fourth, okay? And it means the same thing, just written differently. And again, I'm going to start working from the outside here first. So first I'm going to work with this four, because the to the fourth is the outer portion of this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the four down in front. So four times, I'm going to keep my inner function the same. Okay, and then subtract one from my exponent. Now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And this gets a little tricky because the inner function tangent has an inner function as well. Okay? So, you know, you might want to think of this almost as separate. So again, what we're doing right here, we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which happens to be tangent 8x. So I wrote it over here so I can kind of think separately, because again, I want to multiply here by the derivative of tangent 8x, because tangent 8x is the inner function. So let me just think right here, okay, um, by itself, the derivative of tangent 8x, because I have to apply the chain rule to that as well, the derivative would be of tangent is secant squared, okay? I would keep my inner function the same, and then I would multiply times the derivative of my inner function, which, you know, my inner function is 8x, so the derivative of that is just 8. So this is the derivative of tangent 8x, which is the inner function that we started with here. So I'm going to multiply this times secant squared um, 8x times 8. Okay? If I wanted to simplify, I can multiply the 8 and the 4 to be 32. Rewrite this as tangent cubed 8x times secant squared of 8x. So we had to apply the chain rule two times, sometimes referred to as double the fun, um, by all calculus students, I'm sure. And, uh, but, it, you know, it still worked out right there. All right, let's take a look at another example. So, you know, the previous section or whatever we learned, uh, the quotient rule, which now you, uh, you know, could use for that. I guess uh, you'd have to use the chain rule as well because the bottom portion is squared. But anyways, let's say at this point now we have the chain rule. You could use the quotient rule for this. But, you know, I think it would be easier to rewrite this by bringing this bottom portion up at the top and rewriting the exponent as negative. So it would be negative 8 times 3 minus 2x to the negative 2. Okay? So it's the same problem. I just rewrote it. And now I think it would be a lot easier to take the derivative of this using the chain rule. So I'd bring the negative 2 down in front times the negative 8 to make it 16. All right? My inner function, I would keep the same. I'd subtract 1 from my exponent to get negative 3. And then at the end, I have to multiply times the derivative of my inner function. Okay, so the derivative of my inner function would be negative 2. So that right there would be the derivative. I think a lot easier than using the quotient rule, which, you know, was, is a totally fine way of doing it. I think it just takes a little longer. And if you want to simplify, it's negative 32. Um, and even if you want to write it, you know, without the negative exponent, which doesn't really matter to me, but some people prefer to write it without a negative exponent, you could rewrite it like that. 
All right, one last problem here. Let's take a look at one ex more example with the, the chain rule. Um, here's one where I have y equals x squared times square root of 1 minus x. For this one, I'm going to have to use the product rule as well, okay? Because it's x squared times square root of 1 minus x. So I've got to use the product rule also. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got x squared as one of my functions. Square root of 1 minus x, which I'll rewrite as 1 minus x to the 1 half, is another one of my functions. So for the product rule, I have to take the derivative of each of those. So this will be 2x. For this, I'll bring the 1 half down in front. 1 minus x to the negative 1 half. Okay. And now when I multiply, and so I use the chain rule on this portion right here. Okay, that's why I'm doing this problem, because I brought the 1 half down in front, I kept my inner function the same, subtracted 1 from my exponent, and then at the end I have to multiply times negative 1, since the derivative of my inner function is negative 1. Okay? So, now, applying the product rule, all right, I've got x squared, which is, so I've got x squared here, so I've got to do this function times the derivative of that one. So it's going to be x squared times this. Okay? So, let's see, I have x squared times 1 half, I also have a negative, so it's going to be negative x squared over 2 times 1 minus x to the negative 1 half. Okay, good deal. And then plus 2x times this, because I'm doing this function times the derivative of that. So I've got this function here times the 2x, so it's going to be 2x times 1 minus x to the 1 half. And for, for this purpose, I'm just going to leave it like that. I actually have seen a couple problems that are or uh, multiple choice that require you to simplify this by, you know, writing this on the bottom as to the one half, uh, as opposed to uh, the negative up there, and then finding a common denominator. But I'd rather focus on the chain rule thing for this right here.